Welcome to the Life 2.0 podcast, your go-to source for personal development and mindset coaching. I'm Matt Jones, a former pro musician turned lifestyle entrepreneur and author, as well as a proud father. On this show, we dive deep into different strategies, tools, and concepts that can empower your life in all areas, from mindset to health, career, relationships, and more. Whether you're looking to break through limiting beliefs, overcome obstacles, or simply live your best life, we've got you covered with expert insights and practical tips. So sit back, relax, and get ready to unlock your full potential with the Life 2.0 podcast. Thanks for tuning in. It means everything to me. Now let's get to the episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's podcast. Uh, This is Matt Jones here. Uh, Many of you may know that quote that was from the movie Fight Club. That was Brad Pitt's character, Tyler Durden, and uh, sort of a very uh, dark movie. But um, yeah, so today might sound a little bit like uh, a bit of a dark theme, but it's really not. Uh, the, The point of this podcast is to offer different points of view, concepts, life strategy, and, you know, some uh, sort of, I suppose, alternative ideas for living your life. So, yeah, so that's what we're exploring today. And, yeah, that's why I named this Your Life Has New Meaning. Your life has no meaning and nothing happens for a reason. And uh, so, but it, what you will see by the end of this is that this is actually about happiness and how you can use these ideas um, to improve your life. You know, we often hear the phrase, everything happens for a reason. And when something unexpected happens or unpleasant occurs in our lives, you know, we hear people say this, you might, you know, a friend might say it or a work colleague, uh, you know, a family member, you know, and this phrase implies that there is some sort of grand plan or purpose to our lives. But, you know, what if this idea is flawed? So, you know, today I wanted to explore that I think what I believe is the fallacy of this beliefs. Uh, that everything happens for a reason, and, you know, really offer an alternative approach to to finding true happiness, to be more objective in your life, and not just to use these these trite, throwaway phrases that are quoted way too much. You know, recent studies show that more and more people are questioning the traditional idea of, you know, divine purpose and grand schemes in life. The, the percentage of people who don't identify with any religion has increased from 16% in 2007 to over 30% in 2023. And I think that's where this phrase is, you know, kind of rooted in, uh, not to, um, to downplay anybody's personal beliefs. Um, however, this is just an alternative, alternative philosophy, what I believe. I just believe it tends to stem from there. And so it, this is a shift in perspective. So th- this shift means that, you know, people are really looking for new ways to, to find meaning in their lives, you know, to find answers. So I have five important points to make on this today. So, so let's start. The first point is you are not special. <laughs> so what this does, this doesn't mean, you know, at all, we are all unique and special in our own way as human beings on this planet, you know, beautiful, capable, sentient beings, you know, with the privilege of seeing and feeling and, you know, living on this earth. And we are all special and we can find our unique special pathways and do something with our lives and be special, you know, and spread love and positivity and do a lot of things. And yeah, we can be special. But what this refers to is, in the grand scheme of the universe, creation, you know, what have you. As humans, we may consider ourselves the most advanced species on Earth, but we mustn't fall into the trap of assuming that the universe was exclusively designed for our benefit. The universe operates in a state of entropy and disorder, and it would be presumptuous, frankly, to believe that we hold a position of greater significance than other form of life. You know, it's almost a display of arrogance to entertain the notion that the universe was created solely to cater to our existence. So rather than succumbing to fear, we should embrace the notion that our existence is a product of chance and appreciate every moment of our lives. We should refrain from wasting our time dwelling in negativity and anxiety and instead focus on being true to ourselves. You know, so the concept of purpose is not preordained, but rather... It is something that we create in each moment of our lives. We are the grand designers and responsible for crafting our own lives. And it is up up to us to decide what is real and what is not, 
without being influenced by external factors such as friends, family, or social institutions, frankly. So what I'm saying is, yes, so firstly, we're not special, you know. The belief that everything happens for a reason assumes that life is predictable and that the events are predetermined, you know. However, life is unpredictable, and things happen randomly and without any discernible reason sometimes, you know. There's Recently in the news, there's a lot of shootings in the United States. We seem to just hear about these every week. It's like every week something happens, something bad happens, and we try to find a reason for it. We try to justify it, but you know what? There is no reason for things, these horrible things that happen sometime in life, mortality, you know, and disease and all these horrible things. Um, so accepting the reality can be challenging, but it can also be liberating. And that's the point of this. So instead of searching for a divine purpose, you know, we can focus on creating our own purpose. And, you know, one of my favorite authors that I studied back in the day around nihilism is Frederick Nietzsche. And his idea of nihilism, you know, it's complex and can be interpreted in different ways. But one common interpretation is that he saw it as a necessary stage in the process of personal growth and transformation. He believed that Traditional values and beliefs were, you know, not really valid and that this realization could lead individuals to a state of nihilism or the feeling that life is meaningless and without purpose. But the idea here is to empower yourself. You create the purpose, you know, you know, you have the answers. You just have to find them for yourself. And that creates more contentment in your life rather than just getting these ready baked good ideas, you know, delivered to you, you know, uh, Nietzsche believed that nihilism was not, you know, an end point, but rather a, a starting point for creating new values and meanings in life. He believed that the absence of traditional values and beliefs could create the conditions for the emergence of a new, more authentic way of living. And this process, which he called the uh, revaluation of all values, involves injecting, uh, rejecting inherited values and creating new ones based on you know, an individual's experience and your own experimentation with your life and how you want to live it, you know, based on what you think and what you want, not what other people think and want. So in this sense, Nietzsche's idea of nihilism can be seen as a positive because it opens up the possibility for individuals individuals to create their own meaning and purpose in life. So instead of relying on external authorities uh, or beliefs, individuals are encouraged to engage in a process of self-discovery, self-creation, you know, which can lead to greater authenticity and fulfillment. This is something that early on in my life when I was trying to figure out my, my career, my life, um, I was struggling with my spirituality at the moment. I was trying to find some answers. Then after a while, this, this realization just opened up my whole life and I felt more authentic in who I am and I actually felt better. I kind of felt like I saw behind the curtain a little bit. So I hope that this might, you know, uh, you know, inspire some ideas for you. Maybe perhaps, you know, inspire a new way of living for yourself. You know, maybe, maybe the, the answers that you've been given your whole life just don't really add up. So that's why I, I really wanted to spread this message today. Um, you know, his, Nietzsche's philosophy really encourages individuals to embrace the challenges, you know, the difficulties of life rather than, you know, trying to escape them or, or avoid them, right? You know, the more we resist something, the more it just keeps happening in our life because we, we don't actually deal with it, the root cause. You know, he believed that suffering was actually an essential part of the human experience and that it could really be transformed into a source of strength and, and growth, you know, and by, by facing the realities of life, including, you know, the feeling of inherent meaningless, you know, we as individuals can develop a deeper understanding of, of ourselves and the world around us. So overall, the idea of nihilism can be seen as positive because it offers an alternative, you know, to traditional values and beliefs that we've been fed for, you know, thousands of years. And, you know, that we may no longer today in 2023 believe to be valid or really relevant to our lives. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and encourages individuals to engage in a process of self-discovery and self-creation to embrace the challenges and, the, and all the difficulties. And, you know, you will find your own meaning and purpose. You know, I don't believe purpose is something that you find. I believe it is something that uh, is cultivated over a period of time through your own interests, you know, and passions. Okay, so this is the second point. Traditional personal development can really suck, and much of it is not helpful in the end, I believe. Uh, nowadays, there's a lot of coaches, there's a lot of gurus, and I follow a lot of them. Uh, but after a while, you kind of hear the same sayings, they can come off a bit trite or, or kind of fall short, you know what I mean? Uh, so a lot of times, we really need to, you know, get down to the facts, the truth of the matter, 
And that's what I like to do. I like to kind of like really take a, a microscopic, microscopic point of view on this and really dig deeper into these ideas. You know, so the traditional approach to personal develop, development is often based on these outdated ideas of success and happiness. We're taught to set goals and work tirelessly to achieve them, uh, which I do believe in setting goals, uh, but, you know, not every day, you know, taking over your life. Um, it's good to have a framework, but, you know, not focus on it every day because you live for the future. But, you know, this can lead to a never-ending cycle of striving and dissatisfaction, you know. But instead, we can find joy and contentment by being present in the moment and appreciating the simple things in life. So here are some other examples, you know, I feel that can be unhelpful. Like, uh, you've probably heard this, just think positive thoughts. (laughs) You know, this statement can oversimplify the very complex nature of human emotions and experiences, individual experiences, and, you know, doesn't acknowledge that it's not always easy to control one's thoughts or feelings. Just think positive thoughts. Yeah, not so much. Another one is, if you can dream it, you can achieve it. Um, (laughs) You know, dreaming is important. Yes, maybe you can. But, you know, this statement can be a bit unrealistic. Uh, It sets an unrealistic expectation that Anything is possible if one simply just believes in it hard enough, right? It doesn't really, it fails to recognize the impact of external factors such as, you know, privilege, um, education, systematic barriers, you know, for an individual's success. Uh, The next one is happiness is a choice. And the statement implies that, you know, one can always choose to be happy regardless of the circumstances. And it really disregards the role of mental health and neurological conditions that can really affect one deeply and, you know, their ability to experience happiness. I, I do believe in general that that is basically true. It really is. Some people just choose to be miserable because it makes them feel more. Um, but in general, it could be a bit insensitive. Uh, the next one, fake it till you make it. I'm sure you've heard this a lot. I've said it a lot myself, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't believe that this is a very helpful statement. It suggests that, you know, one should basically pretend to be happier confident, you know, even if they're not, or try to do a job that they don't really know, uh, you know, in order to eventually become that way. And it, it really ignores the value of authenticity and the importance of acknowledging and addressing one's true emotions, you know. You don't want to live a fake life. You don't want to be fake happy. You don't want to be fake. You just don't want to be fake. You know, it just doesn't help. You want to be authentic. You want to, you want to, you know, live with love and and be pure and genuine with your family, your friends, your work colleagues. That's how you really develop deep relationships in life. You know, faking it in general is just not very good. And then the, (laughs) the last one, obviously, is everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. You know, I'm sure you've heard many people say this and they deeply believe it. But, you know, the statement, it really bothers me. It has for a long time. And it just assumes that there is a grand plan or purpose of our lives. Um, And, you know, it can be dismissive of the hardships and struggles that individuals face every day, suggesting that their pain and suffering, their pain and suffering is like somehow justified, you know. But, you know, what does murder and horrible disasters of human suffering have to do with this reason? It's crap, you know, so you want to just really stop this thinking, you know, it only serves to make you feel better and it's doling your sense of reason. Let me say that again. It's only serving to make you feel better and it's doling your sense of reason. You have to think better. If you're coming up with, if you're coming up with reasons to make yourself feel better, you're, you're faking it again. You're just, you're just faking it and you're coming up with stuff to, uh, make you feel better. But you know, in the end, that's really not that helpful. You may think it is in the short term, but in the long term, It's really not. Okay, third, third point. Why this phrase is stupid. (laughs) So basically, the phrase everything happens for a reason, it's like a horoscope. It's vague, unhelpful, and ultimately meaningless. It's the kind of thing, you know, a family member or friend might say to you after a breakup or a horrible day at work, you get fired, And you have to get a new job, you know, as if the universe were playing this like game of chess with your life and you're just the pawn in this scheme, you know, and, you you know, there's a puppet master at all times controlling everything you do. Well, it's just not true. Um, So let's be real. You know, the the universe doesn't give a damn about us. I'm sorry to say it (laughs) harshly, but it doesn't. Okay, we're just tiny specks of dust floating through the void, and we're just trying to make sense of a world that often makes no sense at all, and we're driving ourselves mad crazy. You know, my God versus your God, my belief versus your belief, 
you know, and we try to make sense of things. But unfortunately, I personally believe we're just not that evolved. If there is some grand vision to all this, I just, I, I personally don't feel that um, we're, we're evolved enough to understand it. There's a lot of uh, new breakthroughs in science and what's happening. Um, but, you know, we just don't really know in the end. But, you know, I think living your life based on what someone else is telling you that you should believe is a, is a very dangerous road to go down, you know. Um, so, yeah, you know, I, I, think, I think the reason that we need some sort of grand design is because a lot of us are scared. We're scared of the randomness and the chaos in the world, and we're scared of the idea that we're not in control. We don't like that as human beings, right? Um, but as Nietzsche said, you know, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. So instead of looking for reasons from somewhere else, you know, that, you know, something happens to you, you know, we should focus on creating our own why, our own purpose and meaning in life. You know, the reason you got fired from your job is because you were late five times last month and your boss said goodbye. You know, don't go, well, I just got fired because I think, you know, the job wasn't right for me and I just wasn't really feeling it. No, like you need to have some accountability. You got fired because you're bad at your job, you know, and you could think of this in your relationships. You know, you can say, uh, you know, uh, I broke up with this person because, uh, or they broke up with me because they said I cheated on them, but, you know, that's no big deal. You know, you have to take <laughs> accountability for these things. If you cheated, that was very bad, and it's going to affect you in the future in another relationship. You know, if you're not into a monogamous relationship, maybe you shouldn't be in a relationship. You know, it's about accountability. You know, so it's all of these things. Um, don't just give it away to the universe like, it happened for a reason. It's just not going to help you. Um so, yeah, so basically, basically it, this is just not helpful. It's, it's, it's as useful as a screen door on a submarine, you know. So it's time to let go of this antiquated thinking and start to embrace the chaos of life, you know. Embrace it. If you're not okay, that's okay. If I'm having a bad day, sometimes that's my mantra. I'm not okay, but that's okay. I'm not okay, but that's okay. You know, it's all right to have these negative feelings and try to dig a little bit deeper. You know, because who knows, maybe the best things in life are the ones that happen by accident, you know, and lead you on a better journey. But it was an accident. (laughs) All right, moving on, the fourth point. So how do you be positive with seemingly negative thinking? So being positive does not mean ignoring or denying negative thoughts or emotions. In fact, trying to suppress or avoid negative thoughts and feelings can make them worse, right? Instead, being positive means acknowledging the negative and choosing to focus on the positive impacts of a situation. Um, One way to do this, uh, which I do a lot of, uh, because I've been in those dark places, I've had those, lived in those dark corners of my mind. The way to do this is by practicing gratitude. And even in difficult or challenging situations, there are often, there are always things to be grateful for. So, for example, if you're going through a breakup, you might be grateful for the support of your friends or the opportunity to, you know, focus on yourself and your own growth. And another approach is to reframe these negative thoughts in a more positive light. So, for example, instead of thinking, I can't do this, try to reframe it as, I may struggle at first, but with practice and perseverance, I can improve. You know, it's also important to remember that negative thoughts and emotions are are normal and a a natural part of the human experience. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel angry and frustrated. The key is just to not let these emotions control your thoughts and actions on a daily basis, right? So, you know, practice self-care and, you know, these things will help you maintain a positive outlook. But you need to think of it like exercise, right? If you're not healthy, you're not feeling good, you know, because you don't exercise, you have to keep it up. So you have to think about your mind. You have to work on your mental fitness as well. Not just your mental health, but your mental fitness. You have to work on it daily. So, you know, make sure you're getting enough sleep. Make sure you're also eating well, you know, and exercising and taking time for yourself to do the things you enjoy. You know, I've recently started getting back to myself and doing things I enjoyed when I was a kid, like, uh, like skateboarding. And I've been listening to a lot of bands that I really like and and writing more um you know and i'm you know uh, you have to do those things that you that really light you up and that you enjoy not that you think you will enjoy so in summary being positive doesn't mean denying or suppressing negative thoughts and emotions it's about acknowledging them knowing that they're there 
but choosing to focus on the positive aspects anyway, okay? Practice gratitude, reframe those thoughts, and take care of yourself. It's okay to be in a dark tunnel, but know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. It's okay. Eventually, you'll get out of it. You just don't want to live a fake life. You don't want to be fake positive. It's not a good way to live. I'm sure many of you know people like that in your own life. All right, so fifth and final point. Why is... Why is being more, and this is a question, why is being more authentic and honest with your emotions and thinking more helpful in the end? So I I truly believe honesty and authenticity are important values that will have a profound impact on our lives, on our relationships, on our career, on everything. Being true to ourselves and our emotions can help us develop our our self-awareness, and it definitely builds strong relationships, and you also make better decisions. And I also want to explore some of the ways that being more honest and authentic can benefit your overall well-being, happiness, and success, Um, from reducing stress to uh, your family relationships, your, um, you know, marriages, etc. You know, these will have a profound impact. So let's see. So number one, in terms of... uh, being more authentic and honest, it, it definitely definitely improves your self-awareness. So when you're, when you're honest about your emotions and your thoughts, it will help you develop a deeper understanding of yourself. And this self-awareness will help you identify your strengths, your weaknesses, and areas for improvement. Um, another reason being more authentic and honest with your emotions is better is that you, have, you make better decisions. When you're honest with yourself, you're able to make better decisions that align with your values and goals that you can feel in your heart and mind. And you, you make these decisions based on a more accurate assessment of your abilities and limitations. Uh, another reason is uh, obviously improved relationships. When you're, when you're honest, you're, you're more likely to build trust and develop those deeper connections. You know, I'm sure, so, you know, some of you have friends, um, but sometimes there's some friends that, you know, tend to stick around or that you maybe pay more attention to because you can have those really deep, really honest, really genuine conversations where you're not afraid to share anything um, because you're just being truthful, honest, and authentic. And when you don't have to be fake or, you know, walk on eggshells around anybody, that's when you develop those lifelong relationships. And, um, you know, those are going to, those matter for you, you know, <laughs> much more in the end, and I've definitely noticed it at a, as I've gotten uh, you know, older in life. Um, another reason to be more authentic and honest is that it reduces stress. Uh, when you're honest with yourself and others, you don't have to spend that energy hiding your true thoughts and emotions, you know, hi, you know hiding what you're thinking, um, and this will basically overall reduce stress and allow you to just you know, kind of focus on what's important and just have greater clarity in your life. And in this process, you, it just feels like you lift like a, a weight off your shoulders. You know, we all, I think a lot of us, we carry these weights around on our shoulders, these invisible weights holding us down of, you know, trying to please everybody. And, you know, when you do that, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of energy. So if you can just cancel that energy, be more authentic, be more real, say what you want to think. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's an easier way to live your life. And uh, the last reason for being more authentic and honest is, uh, like I said, greater happiness. So, you know, you're much likely to be happier and fulfilled this way. You're not trying to be someone you're not, and you're not sacrificing your values and your goals to please others. From the king people pleaser himself, take it from me. (laughs) You will live much better that way. Um, So, yeah, so in summary, being more honest and authentic with your emotions and thoughts will lead to greater self-awareness, better decision-making, improved relationships, reduce stress, and greater happiness. And it will just help you live a more fulfilling, happier life. And I believe you'll achieve your goals in a way um, that's actually a little bit easier, um, personally. So in conclusion, uh, the belief that everything happens for a reason, guys, is a fallacy. All right, just stop believing it. (laughs) Don't listen to anybody who says it. All right, listen, life is unpredictable. All right, and events happen randomly every single day. Right. Every one decision you make will change the course of your day and the things that happen to you will change the course of your day. But you don't always have control over it. And we just have to accept it. So embrace the chaos, guys. The chaos is not a bad thing. All right. Every day we live in chaos, but, you know, we're, we're still living. Um, and, you know, life's pretty great, isn't it? So by embracing the chaos of life and focusing on the present moment, we can create our, our own meaning, our own purpose. And we don't need to come up with these reasons to make ourselves better be better. So 
let go of the idea that everything happens for a reason and instead just find your own happiness, find that contentment in your journey and take accountability for your life, all right, for every decision you make and for, for, for the things that happen to you, okay? Sometimes, you know, things just happen and we have to accept it and that's life, you know? So I, I hope that this has been helpful for you guys. I hope that it's, you've understand my perspective. I hope I haven't been too harsh or the sound <laughs> too dark, uh, but you know, I think that this is the best way to live. And, uh, I, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts and I'd love to hear your experiences. So, you know, share them in the comments below on the podcast. Let me know, you know, if you've been through this or perhaps um, this is a, a phrase that's bothered you. And, you know, if you tend to think through this stuff like I do, overthink them. <laughs> that's my thing. But uh, yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Uh, again, go to the website, life20movement.com. You can download some free resources. And I really thank you for making it to the end of this podcast, uh, you know, being with you guys and talking to you and, and getting the responses. Uh, we're now in almost 60 countries on this. Um, it's, it's really exciting, and it means the world to me. So, um, you know, I, I, I've had my struggles in my life, and I really believe in, you know, bettering myself. That's why I started Life 2.0, uh, because I need this as much as you guys do. And I work on it every day. And that's why I want to share my life, my story with you here. So I, I really hope it's been helpful to you guys. Please, please let me know in the comments if it's uh, bringing you some value and making recommendations for something uh, you'd like me to discuss, uh, discuss next. Okay. All right. Lots of love. Bye-bye.